so far we have seen and understood the syntax of the lambda calculus, but that is not enough. We need to be able to take a lambda calculus program and run it and get the corresponding results. For example, imagine a lambda calculus program to calculate the factorial of a number. We need rules to be able to make sure we calculate it correctly. In the next sections, we are going to cover the rules which we follow to evaluate lambda expressions. We'll start with defining some terminology, what bound and free variables are. We need to understand this before we move on to the evaluation rules. We'll then cover delta rules, then beta reduction, then alpha conversion, and finally, eta conversion. Let's consider the following lambda expression. So we have lambda x and the function which adds two variables, x and y. We are also applying the constant for to the expression. A binding links a variable name to a value, and so in this expression, the variable name x is bound to the value 4. This is because the lambda abstraction defines the variable name in the abstraction as x. In contrast, within this particular expression, we cannot see the lambda y anywhere, and so the variable y is not bound to a value, it is said to occur free in the expression. The key piece of terminology to note is the usage of the terms bound and free, and that each occurrence of a variable within an expression is said to be either bound or free. We will come back to bound and free variables over the next slides. Delta rules are rules which are used to evaluate built-in functions. They are quite easy to understand. So consider the lambda expression for 4 plus 2. We all know that the answer should be 6, and that this expression should reduce to the value 6. So we reduce it by using a delta rule. Whenever we reach a point in an expression where we are using a primitive function that we know how to reduce, we say we are using a delta rule to reduce it. This is usually denoted with a right arrow showing the direction of the reduction with a delta symbol on top of the arrow. Nothing particularly difficult here. The beta reduction is another rule which can be applied to reduce a lambda expression to a simpler one, but this time it applies to lambda abstractions. Beta reduction is formally defined as the following. This probably looks scary, but I'll explain it further and then you will understand what exactly this notation means. You can read it as a lambda abstraction with a formal parameter named x and a function body of expression e, an argument z is beta reduced by replacing all free occurrences of x in the expression e with z. To be honest, that definition sounds like a bunch of nonsense, so let's make it concrete by looking at an actual example. As we've understood from the previous sections, a lambda abstraction effectively defines an anonymous function. This one has a single variable and the function body just adds 1 to it. Let's see how the parts of this lambda abstraction relate to the definition above. First, we have the lambda x, which is the same in both. Now, we have the body of the lambda abstraction, which I have marked red. This corresponds to the part of the definition denoted by the capital E. And the value 4 corresponds to z in the definition. Now we want to perform a beta reduction on this expression, and so we first consider the body of the lambda abstraction. That is defined as e in our definition and highlighted in red in our lambda abstraction. We need to see what occurrences of the formal parameter x are free within the body. Remember, it is what is free within the body of the lambda abstraction, not the entirety of the lambda abstraction itself. The body specifically is marked red. When you consider only the bit in red, then there is no lambda x present, and so x occurs free. We will see some more complicated examples when that is not the case in a bit. We can see that the single x is free and not bound within the function body, and so is eligible to be replaced with z. The result of a beta reduction is a copy of the body of the lambda abstraction, with all free occurrences of the formal parameter replaced with the argument. I'll repeat that again because that is the key point here. The result of the beta reduction is a copy of the body of the lambda abstraction with the free occurrences of the formal parameter replaced with the argument. 
In this case, it would mean copying the lambda abstraction's body and replacing x with 4, because x is free within the lambda abstraction's body. And we can use a delta rule to reduce this further to 5, which is our final result. That's it. If you are struggling with understanding the notation at the top, then just ignore it. I've only included it within the video for the sake of completeness. And if you still don't understand the free bit, then just wait till the next slide when we go through more examples and it should click. Now let's do a few more beta reductions. Take a look at example 2. The first step in the beta reduction is to consider the lambda abstraction's body. We can see that both occurrences of the variable x occur free within the body. That is because there is no lambda x within the body of the lambda abstraction to bind it. We perform the beta reduction by copying the body of the lambda abstraction and replacing all of the free occurrences of the formal parameter x with the argument 10. And then we can use a delta rule to reduce this expression to 20 to get to the final result. For example 3, it gets slightly more complicated. And this example should hopefully clarify what we mean by free for those who still don't understand. For the first step in the beta reduction, like always, we consider the lambda abstraction's body. You will notice that the body itself is another lambda abstraction. That's absolutely fine, because as we saw in a previous slide, the definition of a lambda abstraction is recursive. Now x occurs free in this expression, but y does not, because there is a lambda y there. So the next step is to copy the body of the lambda abstraction and replace x with the value of the parameter, which was 4. We only replace x because only x is free. The lambda y makes it such that the y is not free, but bound. The lambda expression which is now there after the beta reduction is the inner lambda abstraction from the previous line. Since it is just another reducible expression, we can perform another beta reduction on it. The first step is to consider the lambda abstraction's body. Here we can see that y occurs free within the body. And the next step is to copy the body of the lambda abstraction and replace the free occurrence of the formal parameter y with the value 5. And we can use a delta rule to reduce this further to 1. Hopefully this example cleared up what we mean by free and bound variables. For the final example of beta reduction, consider example 4. Here, the argument to the first lambda abstraction is another lambda abstraction itself. In other words, a function is being given as an argument to another function. Let's beta reduce this. The first step, as always, is to consider the lambda abstraction's body. Here, f occurs free. The next step is to copy the body of the lambda abstraction and replace the free occurrences of the formal parameter with the argument. In this case, the argument was another lambda abstraction, and so we replace it with that. So we now have another lambda abstraction which is reducible. Let's reduce it by performing a beta reduction. The first step is to consider the lambda abstraction's body, and we can see that x occurs free in the expression. Next, we copy the body of the lambda abstraction and replace all free occurrences of x with the argument 3. And we can use a delta rule to reduce this to 4. That's it. Hopefully you understand it now. I think it's actually quite intuitive once you have seen a few examples. Now let's consider another lambda expression. Pause the video and as an exercise, try to reduce this expression to the final number yourself. It is a bit tricky and we'll reduce it together afterwards. OK, the purpose of this exercise was to reveal a few things. Firstly, when the formal parameter names of a lambda abstraction are not unique, like in this case, where both lambda abstractions have variables named x, things can get confusing. How can we identify what we need to substitute for when applying the function? Well, we just need to follow the rules correctly. So the first thing to do is to look at the body of the lambda abstraction. That's highlighted here in red. The incorrect thing to do would be to replace all occurrences of x with the value that was applied, which in this case was 9. 
Remember, we have to identify the free occurrences and replace those only. So in this case, the only free occurrence is the one outside of the body of the inner lambda abstraction. So we perform the beta reduction by copying the body of the lambda abstraction and replacing that particular occurrence of x with the value. Now we have another lambda abstraction and we want to beta reduce that. So we perform the beta reduction by copying the body of the lambda abstraction, replacing the free occurrences of the formal parameter, this time with the value 9. In this case, the only x in the lambda abstraction body is free, so we can replace that. And now, to reduce our arithmetic functions, we can use the delta rules. 9 minus 1 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, and that's the final answer. This example was slightly more difficult than the others, but it's important to see so that you understand how confusing things can become when there is a name clash. This leads us on to the next type of rule, which is known as alpha conversion. Consider the following lambda expression. Let's try to perform a beta reduction here, in the same way we have been doing so far. First, we consider the body of the lambda expression, which I have highlighted in red. The two f variables occur free in the body. So we perform the beta reduction by copying the body of the lambda abstraction, replacing the free occurrences of f with the argument x. This is actually an incorrect thing to do, because the variable we are replacing it with, x, is already used as a formal parameter inside the body. We cannot replace a variable with another variable which is already captured by the inner binding because there is a clash. This is known as the name capture problem. To fix the issue, we need alpha conversion. If we just change the name of the formal parameter x, along with all of its occurrences in the original expression, to something else, then surely they ought to be equivalent. Changing the name of a formal parameter, as long as it's done consistently, is known as alpha conversion, and sometimes, like here, it is actually necessary. Since all we are doing is changing the name of the parameter and its occurrences, alpha conversion is also sometimes known as alpha renaming. Let's go back to our original expression and try to reduce it again. We recognize it suffers from the name capture problem, so the first step in the reduction is to perform an alpha conversion on it, changing the occurrences of x to another name. For our purposes, we use the name y. There is no name capture problem in the new expression, and so we can now safely perform our beta reduction. We do this by copying the body of the lambda abstraction, replacing the free occurrences of f with x again. When we compare the correct reduction to the incorrect one, we can see why it is necessary to perform the alpha conversion. We define alpha conversion formally as when we have a lambda abstraction with a formal parameter named x and a function body of expression e and y is not free in e, then it is alpha converted by replacing the formal lambda parameter x to y and replacing occurrences of x in the expression e with y. Just like the beta reduction formal definition, don't worry if you don't understand it, I'm just including the definition here for completeness. You can think of alpha conversion as just changing the name of a parameter and all of its occurrences within a lambda abstraction. For our purposes, that will suffice. In summary, alpha conversion, or alpha renaming as it is sometimes called, is another reduction rule which is sometimes necessary to perform before applying a beta reduction. Some compilers include an alpha conversion stage so that all variable names become unique. This is done to simplify subsequent processing and avoid any potential name capture problems. Consider the following two lambda expressions. The first one contains a lambda abstraction, but the second does not. But in essence, the two expressions ought to be equivalent, right? They each take a parameter and add the number 1 to it. In the first case, the parameter is formally defined with the x, and in the second case, the parameter is implicit because you are using the plus function, which needs two parameters to operate on. Here is where eta conversion kicks in. Eta conversion is another reduction rule. If we have two expressions, which behave in exactly the same way when an argument is applied, then they can be eta converted into each other. Eta conversion is also known as eta reduction. 
an eta reduction allows us to replace the first expression, which is a lambda abstraction, with the simpler second expression, which does not contain a lambda abstraction. Eta reduction allows us to eliminate the lambda abstraction and so is sometimes said to be an optimization. Strictly speaking, you don't actually need it, but sometimes it does make a lambda expression simpler and compilers can perform it to optimize code. Formally, we can define eta conversion as when we have a lambda abstraction with a formal parameter x and x is not free in e and e denotes a function, it can be eta reduced to just the e. Let's summarize each of the evaluation rules we have learnt about. Delta rules are used to evaluate built-in functions such as mathematical functions. Beta rules are used to reduce an expression. A beta reduction is the result of applying a lambda abstraction to its argument. We do this by copying the body of the lambda abstraction and replacing all free occurrences of the formal parameter with the argument. An alpha conversion is used to rename variables within a lambda expression. This is sometimes needed before performing a beta reduction to prevent the name capture problem from occurring. An eta reduction is an optimization which can be used to replace one lambda expression with another simpler one. That's it for the evaluation rules. Now we'll look at the different evaluation orders. This video is a clip from a longer video where we explore the lambda calculus even further. Check that out if you want to see more.